Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Birdie Worry here, trusting that you are doing well, my sister, my brother. So I hope that you're having a beautiful uh, Wednesday. I hope and pray that you are. And so um, let me ask you, did you take time out to study? Remember, we must study the word. We must, must study the word. And we know it is so late on planet Earth, and the solution is Jesus Christ. And he state, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who served leave it in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. And this book is the same book. It's the same book. It's just different covers. And where's the other one? I don't see. They're just different covers. Same information, but just different covers. Okay. So let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Right now, Father God, I ask you that you will decrease me, Father God, so that you will be increased, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister, my brother, so scripture reading is coming from, ooh, okay, I've got to go over there because my Bible is over on the other side. Hold on, hold on. I'm working out of my guest room, hold on working out of my guest room and so I've got different um, projects that I'm working on and so I have them on this um, on in my um, on this guest bed and um, then I have my basket over there so I did not realize that I had that over there and then some stuff over here so nevertheless nevertheless it's going to work out so we are going to uh, Joshua 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 chapter 6, verses 10. Joshua chapter 6, verses 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So let's get into our topic. We are doing a review of chapter 9, and we are in the truth about angel. We want the truth and nothing but the truth, okay? And it states here, angels from Sinai to take, let me go back, angels from Sinai to the taking of Jericho. And this is angels in Israel's wilderness wandering. Here's the opening point. We have seven points and um, we have two closing points. So here we go. Christ was the angel appointed of God to go before Moses in the wilderness, conducting the Israelite in their traveling to the land of Canaan. Here is point number one. In all the way of God's leading, they, the Israelite, had found water to refresh the thirsty, bread from heaven to satisfy their hunger, and peace and safety under the, the shadowy cloud by day and the fiery pillow by night. Angels were ministering to them as they climbed the rocky heights of treading the rugged path of the wilderness. So here is point number two, and this is under, uh, for those of you that probably just stopped by or have not been following uh, my videos, you could either scroll down on Facebook and you'll find the in-depth lesson, because this is just a quick review. Or you can also go over to YouTube under Burdell Warrior, and you will find the in-depth lesson there as well. Israel at Sinai. And now before then, in solemn majesty, Monk Sinai lifted their massive front. The clouded pillar rested upon the summit, and the people spread their tent upon the plain beneath. There was to be their home for nearly a year. At night, the pillar of fire assured them of the divine protection, and while they were locked in slumber, the bread of heaven fell gently upon the encampment. Okay, point number three. And this is under them, let them make me a sanctuary. And this was a two-part um, series. 
so like I stated, you scroll along on Facebook or go over to YouTube. So this is just a quick. And it says, let them make me a sanctuary. Look, but before I go in here, I'm not sure if I should do this first or go. So let me just go in here first. It says, during his stay in the mount, Moses received direction for the building of a sanctuary in which divine presence would be especially manifested. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them was the command of God. Okay, and this... Okay, so let me... Okay, it says, After the building of the tabernacle was completed, Moses examined all the work and compared it with the pattern, the direction he had received of God. And he saw that every part of it agreed with the pattern, and he blessed the people. God gave a pattern of the ark to Moses with special direction how to make it. The ark was made to contain the tables of stone on which God engraved with his own finger the Ten Commandments. It was in form like a chest and was overlaid with inlaid with pure gold. It was ornamented with crowns of gold around about, around about the top. So let me show you. So this is a drawing. I had a bigger one um, when I first did this part. So if you look at this, the drawing of the tabernacle. Okay. So I'm not sure if you guys could look really good. And then thank you, Pastor um, uh, Michael Johnson. This is where I got this from. And so we have the outer court here. And then this is the altar of burnt offering. And then this is the laven. And then you had the first compartment the first apartment and that was the most holy that was the holy place the first compartment was the holy place and this is what it is and you have the table of shore bed you have the incense and the golden candlestick and then this is the part that only the priest goes into and this is the second apartment and this was the most holy place this particular one and then it had the ark of the covenant okay and then you see it has a direction here you got the east you got north, you got west, and then you got south. So this was the diagram that God gave them. And then if you look at the picture here, this give you a little, so this is like, if you want a visual, you know, has a different colors in there. And it is the same thing. So you have the outer court, you have the lave in there, and then you have the first part. And then you see it's veiled with the curtain, if you see that. And then this is where you can see the high priest is there. You guys see that? So this is what it looks like in Bible time. Okay. And I wanted to show you exactly um, the ark. I don't see it here. Let me see if I have it in my other part. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So here is a kind of a better... Um, look at the ark so you can you see that this one this is the ark right here you see that okay okay so that was that and so that was part um part three and like i stated this was a two-part lesson let them make me a sanctuary so we're going to move on over to part number point number four point number four and this is the death and resurrection of moses my sister and brother, until we answered, until we, uh, have we said, till we studied this completely, the sanctuary, and this was a specific message that God gave a uh, seven-day Adventist to proclaim that particular message. So we are in the judgment hour, so we have to be very mindful. That's why we need to be studying, studying like we have never studied before. So this is the death and resurrection of Moses. And the state here. The angels also revealed to Moses that although he mourned because he had sinned and could not enter the promised land, and although he felt that he had caused the children of Israel to sin, yet it was their own sin, their murmuring and complaining spirit, that had led them to deviate from the right and commit a sin that kept them out of the promised land. And like I stated, if you want, this was a two-part, the death of um. Moses was a two-part series, 
And here is the other part, part number four. And this was under part number two. And it says, after he had viewed Canaan to his satisfaction, he laid down like a tired warrior to rest. Sleep came upon him, but it was the sleep of death. Angels took his body and buried it in the valley. The Israelite could never find the place where he was buried. And we know that um, uh, Jesus came and, and, and uh, rose, rose him up. But I mean, you got to go into um, go into the, uh, the in-depth lesson. You have to either scroll down on Facebook to get the whole complete story. Like I said, this is just a two-part. But we know right now that Moses is in heaven because Jesus took him to heaven, rose him up, and then he took him to heaven. So then this is part number five, and this is Balaam, a prophet gone wrong. And this was also a two-part, and it stayed here. The second time Balaam was tested, he longed to comply with the king's request, and although the will of God had already been definitely made known to him, he urged the messenger to tarry, that he might further inquire of God, as though the infinite one were a man to be persuaded. Okay. And moving on over to point number six. And this is under Joshua leads Israel into Canaan. And it says, four heavenly angels always accompanying the ark of God in all its journey to guard it from all danger and to fulfill any mission required of them in connection with the ark. Jesus, the son of God, followed by heavenly angels, went before the ark as it came to Jordan and the water were cut off. Before his presence, Christ and angels stood by the ark and the priests in the bed of the river until all the Israelites had passed over Jordan. And I was going to say something else about this. Let me see right here. Okay, so we know that when in the ark, in the ark, in the ark, we say they had, they had the Ten Commandments of God. We had the rod, and it also, within that um, ark, it also have the manna. Manna was in there. So those are two things. You had the Ten Commandments, you have the rod, and I don't know, some people say Aaron's rod, and then you have the, the manna. That was what was in the ark. Okay, so point number, I didn't, point number six, so let's move over to point number seven. And that was yesterday. I'm trying to see if I have anything else in number six. Okay, so point number seven. And this is the taking of Jericho. And it says, The captain of the Lord's host himself came from heaven to lead the army of heaven in an attack upon the city. Angels of God laid hold of the massive wall and brought them to the ground. Okay, so when we... When the Bible, when it talks about the captain of the Lord's host, we know that's no other than Jesus Christ himself, okay? So if you um, go through the complete lesson of chapter 9, um, it, brought, it brought that point out. And I was trying to see exactly what scripture that came from, and I can't put my hands on that right now. But nevertheless, you can go ahead and, and do that because that's a, that's a Bible verse. Um, that was a Bible verse. The captain of the Lord's host himself. You could probably just Google that and you'll find it. And so then, my sister brother, let me do the closing point. I was trying to find that wording, but I don't have that right now. So here is the closing point. The whole universe has been witness to the scene at Sinai. In the working out of the two administration was seen the contrast between the government of God and that of Satan. Angels, the sinless inhabitants of other worlds, beheld the results of Satan apostasy and the kind of government 
he would have established in heaven had he be permitted to bear sway. Here is our closing point number two. And this is under, I believe, let me make them a sanctuary. Let me go back over here. And this is, the, uh, this is under, let them make me a sanctuary. So this is point number, closing point number two. Throughout their journey, as they, the Israelites, complain of the difficulties in the way and murmuring against their leader, Moses had told them, your murmuring are against God. It is not I, but God, who has wrought in your deliverance. But his hasty words before the rock, shall we bring water? were a virtual admission of their charge. The Lord will remove this impression forever from their minds by forbidding Moses to enter the promised land. Here was unmistakable evidence that their leader was not Moses, but the mighty angels of whom the Lord had said, Behold, I sent an angel before thee, to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice, for my name is in him. And then you can find this in, um, God is so good, I have put in the notes there. Uh, you can find this in Exodus 23, verses 20 to 21. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice, for my name is in him. Exodus 23, 20 to 21. So that concludes, my sister, my brother, our review of chapter 9. Angels from Sinai to the taking of Jericho. So you either can scroll down on Facebook and you get the in-depth lesson, or you can go over to YouTube under Burdell Warrior and you will find the in-depth lesson there as well. So may I share with you my devotion? Hold on. Oh, and then uh, if you look at this one. Oh, all right, let's share this part. Look at this one. So if you look here, this is the this was the outer court, right? So you got the earthly, you have the altar of sacrifice, and you have the laven, and then you have so we're here, we confessed our sins, and then when we get into the the um the first apartment which, which is the holy place, and then we uh we get forgiveness, and then when we get into the most holy place, that's when the sins are removed. But this is a very in deep lesson, and it's not something that I can cover right now. But this is a major, major. If we understand this, my sister and brother, we will understand the plan of redemption from Genesis to Revelation. Um, so, oh my, let me move that out of the way. And here is the devotion. And this is, says, overcoming power promised. Overcoming power promised. And this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is coming from John 17, verses 3. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I ask you, Father God, to continue to take full control, Father God. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, so let me drink some water. Okay, so here we go. It says, If we will come into a close relationship with God, if we will yield to God His own, our minds, our heart, and all that there is of us, we will indeed find peace and happiness that we can obtain nowhere else. Should I repeat that? If we will come into a close relation with God, if we will yield to God his own, our mind, our hearts, and all that there is of us, we will indeed find peace and happiness that we can obtain nowhere else. 
What does it amongst to, to live in this world dependent upon their applause and amusement that we can find here? Do these bring us happiness? No. They bring us only upset and dissatisfaction. And at the same time, we are losing the most precious treasure, the richest blessings that God can bestow upon us. We need to understand much more than we do the worth of our souls. We need to know what we shall do that we may work the works of God. This is the work of God that ye believe on him who he had sent. And this is coming from John 6 verses 29. He can be to us all that we desire. Jesus proclaimed, on the last great day of the feast. If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And this is uh, chapter 7 and verse 37. Uh, and it says, and again, we hear him saying, we hear him saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And this is coming from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Have you tried, have you tried it? There are many who have, and they know that the words of Christ are verity and truth and that when trouble has come in like a flood, they have looked to Jesus and have been comforted and strengthened. Christ has promised that if we yoke up with him, we will find peace and comfort and hope, and we shall know by experience that his words are true. He wants everyone to be saved. Let me repeat that. He wants everyone to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And this is coming from John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Jesus knew that Humanity has, has not power in itself to resist the temptation of the enemy of souls. And therefore, he clothed his divinity with humanity, left his royal throne and high command, and came to this world all sincere and marred, meaning that he was marked and marred with the curse and humiliated himself in the order to set us an example. He came to this world not to attend horse, horse race. Let me repeat that. He came to this world not to attend horse races, not to attend the tater, but he came meek and lowly, and he invite us to learn of him, the King of glory. By doing this, we shall obtain the moral power he left the courts of heaven to bestow upon us. Let me repeat this. Okay, so it says, He came to this world not to attend horse races, not to attend the theater, but he came meek and lowly, and he invite us to learn of him, the King of glory. By doing this, we shall obtain the moral powers he left the courts of heaven to bestow upon us. So that concludes my devotion. Overcoming powered promised. Overcoming powered promised. So here is uh, my hymn. Uh, Come labor on. Come, labor on, who dare stand idle on the harvest plain, while all around him wave the golden grain. 
and to each servant does the master say, go work today. Come labor on, claim the high calling. Angels cannot share to the young and the old the gospel gladness bear. Redeem the time, it hours too swiftly flies. The night draws nigh. Here's the last verse. Come labor on, no time for rest, till glows the western sky, till the long shadows over our pathway lies, and a glad song, and a glad song comes with the setting sun. Well done, well done. Should I repeat the last third verse? Come labor on, no time to rest, glows the western sky. Till the long shadows over our pathway lies, and a glad song comes with the setting sun. Well done, well done. Isn't that what we want to hear, Jesus says, when he comes back, my sister and brother? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Is that what we want to hear? Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that you did not leave me here by myself, Father God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for my sisters, my brothers that stopped by here today, Father God, and the ones that plan to stop by in the future, Father God. You know our individual needs, our longing, our desire. You know the pain that we are going through, Father God. So, Father God, we, we ask you, Father God, to just take it. We Put it at your feet, Father God. Father God, we ask you, Father God, if we have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you that you'll forgive us and make us whiter than snow. And once you've done that, Father God, take the empty vessels, Father God. We give you permission to take these empty vessels. Fill us up with the power, with the love, with the joy, the peace, the power, and the strength to continue this journey. Father God, we forever give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I have prayed, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so I forgot one thing. So on tomorrow, um, when Thursday, our next topic is going to be chapter 10, and it's going to be angels, angels from the time of the judge to the er early kingdom. Angels from the time of the judge to the early kingdom, and that would be chapter 10. So thank you so much, my sister and brother, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. So if you are on uh, Facebook, you can do a, um, do a comment, you could do a like, you could do a share, and then you can also follow me over YouTube on the Burdell Warrior. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. And I thank you so much, my sister and brother, for going over to YouTube or even Facebook and helping me grow my YouTube channel and helping me uh, get the views up. I thank you so much, my sister and brother. I thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. So, but before you go, may I have a hug? May I have a hug? There we go. One two three one more <gasps> one more four thank you so much my sister and brother well consider yourself hug today i love you love you love you i appreciate you until tomorrow be blessed and take care